Hi everybody, thought I'd continue my series on Pediatric Echo for the Adult Tech. Um, we're going to cover the patent ductus arteriosus today, which is a congenital defect that uh, actually everyone is born with, but uh, usually it uh, disappears within the first 24 to 48 hours of you having it. So, um, I thought it would be important for us to go over it because it is something you do see in newborns. Um, it's probably one of the most common uh, causes for an echo in a baby. You know, someone hears a murmur and they panic and they say, we got to get an echo done and the kid's only, you know, 12 hours old. But um, in those cases, you can almost bet your life that it's going to be a PDA, but uh, also depends upon the physician who's listening to the baby. If the doc has real good ears and has been doing pediatric cardiology or neonatology for a long time, they're going to be able to pick up on the fact that it's a patent ductus and they may just listen before they discharge the kid and see if it's closed. Um, a lot of times it'll close itself and then problem solved. If it hasn't closed by the 48 hour mark they still may get an echo just to see and document that it wasn't closed so and then you just follow up with the cardiologist the peds cardiologist to uh, make sure that the ductus closes you know usually it'll be a month or so afterwards to make sure that it's closed as long as it's not a very large ductus it won't cause any problems um, large ductuses are usually seen mainly in neonatal or neonates um, because they're born prematurely and, you know, the ductus is nowhere near um, ready to close. So a lot of times that's when you see the larger ductuses. Um, uh, a ductus is best visualized in the short axis view at the aortic level, um, at least in me doing echoes for so long. Uh, I always found that to be the easiest way to see it. You can also see it in a long axis view of the pulmonary artery. So if you angle up or anteriorly, when you're in a long axis view, you'll get a shot of the PA. You'll see the pulmonary artery. And then sometimes you can see the flow. And I'm going to show you in a little bit what the flow looks like. Okay, so let's look at some of the anatomy of a patent ductus. This is kind of a um, very exaggerated view of the heart um, four chamber view with the shot of the PA and the aorta in it which is you know obviously not something you're gonna see all the time or never um, but there is a good picture of a ductus so this little tube that goes from the aorta to the PA is what we call a patent ductus. Now, that patent ductus is um, basically it's smaller than that. The aorta and the PA are much closer together than in this picture, but I do like the way that it illustrates it, so that's why I used it. So, in utero, or when the baby's inside the mom, the uh, ductus itself, let me just erase this real quick, the ductus itself is responsible for taking um, blood flow from the um, I'm sorry I got lost there for a second but in utero the baby does not need blood to its lungs okay so any blood that goes to its lungs is kind of uh, just used to help the, the lungs develop a little bit but um, for oxygenation obviously the baby gets that from the mother so um, there's no real reason to have a large amount of blood going to the lungs. So, hence the PDA. Um, the PDA itself will shunt blood, so it'll go up the PA and out the PD, or the PA out the patent ductus and then down the uh, aorta. It also can go out the uh, subclavian artery. Um, but it just, it just basically goes into the aorta where that blood can be circulated throughout the baby's body and then brought back to the mother's, you know, to the placenta and then oxygenated and then right back up again 
towards the baby. Now what happens though is once the baby's born everything changes. The pressures in the heart change. So the pressures in the left side of the heart go up and the pressures in the right side of the heart go down. And uh, that's um, what we call you know fetal circulation at first and then you go to normal circulation which is what we all have now in our body. So fetal circulation the right sided pressures are higher um, but eventually they switch. So what happens is, I, if I remember right, I think an enzyme is released um, in the baby's body after it's born that triggers this ductus to start to close. And it just starts to kind of close in on itself. And then the uh, little remnant of the PDA that's left over, which is a little line basically, is called the ligament arteriosis arteriosum or something of that nature it's uh, just something that you might see on an anatomy test but uh, it's it's basically just a ligament that kind of holds the PA and the aorta close together so um, it's of no use really other than that so but the ductus will close at that point and uh, the normal circulation starts okay so let's move on to an echo view so this is the short axis like you'd normally see in an adult um, when you do the short axis at the aortic valve level. So um, the aorta, I'm trying to do this in so you can see. The aorta is right there. I don't know why it changed, but there we go. Yellow looks better. So there's the aorta. There's a coronary here, the left main coronary artery is showing. The uh, main pulmonary artery is coming down here. And then you would see the branches normally coming off here, but um, when you get the ductal flow, you usually go a little more anterior to get it, and uh, sometimes the left and right PA drop out. So what I wanted to show you was actually what the PDA flow looks like. So normally we would see this would be all blue flow, right, going down here. Um, and you would see nothing but blue coming down here. There's left my blue marker. And uh, no red or any other color involved. But when you have a ductus, there is red flow or positive flow going up the PA this way. So that would be red flow. So let's look at this as a red flow thing. Up the PA, and you can see how turbulent it is. There's quite a few different colors in here. There's yellows, and the flow is alias, so there's even some blues in there, and a lot of orange, red. It's just a sign of a lot of aliasing going on. So the flow is very turbulent, and it's going up into the PA. Now, obviously, this is something that if, if it stays open, it will dilate the pulmonary artery a little bit. And then, if it's a sizable enough duct, it can even dilate the left atrium. So, we'd like to keep an eye on them and make sure that they do eventually close. Now, I've seen, I saw a 32-year-old lady one time with a ductus, so it doesn't always close. Um, as long as it's small, it doesn't you know, have any hemodynamic significance, then you know, there's no reason to go after it. Um, there are some people who, I guess some studies have shown that if you have a ductus, you're more likely to get endocarditis around that area, but I've never seen it, so I'm not saying it's not possible, but if I haven't seen it in over 30 years, I kind of find it hard to believe that that would happen, but um, someone's probably had it, so, you know, you can see anything sometimes. So anyhow, this flow is orange because it is going up towards the PA, and that's a flow that's obviously abnormal. You should be seeing all flow that's blue there. So this is when you would use your Doppler. Okay, so here's the uh, Doppler of the patent ductus, and you can see um, the... You don't see it in this picture. I don't know why, but for some reason... Um, we're not seeing it, but the uh, 
the Doppler sample volume is going right through here. Um, and this is continuous wave, so you remember continuous wave takes the highest flow and puts it on the screen. So the little thing that you see across the, the little line that goes horizontal across the Doppler, um, um, the Doppler that you're putting in the pulmonary artery, um, actually has no significance because it's still going to take the highest velocity and put it on the screen. So it's just used to kind of point things out for the docks. Um, this is a very small ductus, even though it flows way up into the PA. The flow in this ductus, ductus in systole is almost, looks like 5 meters per second, so um, that's significant. That's a 100 millimeter gradient, so we're talking about a high flow velocity, which, as you know, the higher the flow, the smaller the orifice, or the smaller the tube in this case, the ductal flow is very high, so this ductus is probably getting ready to close. Um, or, it's been around for a while and it's just very, very small. So it is something that they would watch and they would make sure that uh, it eventually closes. It, in all likelihood it would. Um, but there are some signs when a ductus is bigger and I'll show you that. Okay, now we're looking at some of the flows that we have we see with the uh, ductuses. Um, so we showed you this one already, the restrictive left to right flow, which is what we should see in a small ductus, high velocity, continuous flow. That's one of the keys. It'll be a continuous flow. You'll hear the doctors describe the murmur as like a machinery sounding murmur, like some machine shop going, making a lot of noise. That's because it's both in systole and diastole, so it's usually a pretty noisy murmur. Um, this is non-restrictive flow over here on this side, and that's usually a sign of a bigger ductus, a ductus where the flow is more significant. And then the next one you have is a bidirectional flow, which is down here, and that's where the flow is going both left to right and right to left. Um, obviously that is a significant finding and you want to point that out as soon as possible but this the last one the right to left flow is very significant that means the pressures in the right heart are higher than in the left heart and when things happen in that way um, it's usually a problem a real problem so um, picking that up is a little harder because you don't see the same kind of flow you would see um, in a um, in a regular ductus, you have to go to an arch view and really take a look um, at the descending aorta to see one of these ductuses that's right to left, because you'll see the flow going from the pulmonary artery through the ductus into the aorta, and you'll see that flow going in that direction towards the aorta. So, Okay, so this is a quick shot. I just want to show you this is a, an arch view, so you can see the aortic arch and this is the ascending aorta and the, and the descending aorta. Here's the ductus right about here. You see all that turbulent flow. Um, because you're not, you're kind of looking at it in a, instead of a vertical flow, you're seeing kind of horizontal flow there. So the it's not as definitive to look at it from the arch view. That's why they like you to look at it through the short axis view because it gives them a better idea of the the flow velocities and also the, you know, the, the distance that the flow is going and how wide the jet is, all that stuff. So, so I just quickly wanted to show you how we're closing these ductuses now when they need to be closed. Um, it used to be where they would have to open the entire left side of the chest and the left side of the ribs, spread the ribs apart, get a little suture in there and kind of tie off the ductus to stop the flow. Um, obviously that would be very painful for the child and you know it's a it's a big surgery you're opening up the entire chest. Now they don't have to stop the heart for it but it is you know dangerous work I mean you don't want to lacerate the aorta or anything like that so they have developed this is a catheter going up through the main PA and you can see what looks like a little balloon here 
and a little device at the end that um, the balloon deploys and then kind of pushes that device and anchors it to the walls of the patent ductus and that in turn closes the flow so you don't have any flow going from the aorta anymore into the main PA it just all goes this way so that is uh, how we're closing them now which is great because it's just a cath procedure instead of having to do you know a heart surgery this is what that device looks like just to, so you know this is you know obviously the edge of the oops sorry the edge of the catheter here and on the end of it is this deployable device which is left in the PDA and quickly stops the flow because obviously you're going to have platelets and stuff slamming up against it and it's going to form a, a blockage there so that no flow can go down the ductus anymore so that stays in the body and then tissue grows over it eventually and everything is good so um, but that's how we close them and uh, I think that's all we need to go over with a ductus. Just remember what the color flow looks like. That's the easiest way to pick this up. If you can remember too the waveforms and to determine how severe a ductus is, that will help you too because uh, obviously, you know, a high flow velocity with continuous flow is not something you really have to worry that much about. The doctor will get it when they read it. But if you see, you know, right to left flow, then you need to get the doctor and talk to them about it. So anyhow, that's it for this one. I'll get another one out as soon as I possibly can. Take care.